Hi there and welcome to Code Framer. So in the last video we understood about builder facets where we created multiple builders in order to construct our complex object. Now in this video we will understand about builder inheritance. So if you have understood well about builders and also builder facets then I think it will be quite a cakewalk for you to understand about builder inheritance as well because here also we are creating multiple builders in order to construct our complex object but the only difference is here we will use multi level inheritance to write all our builder classes now what it basically means is the multiple builders that we are creating we will inherit each builder into another builder so that we are able to arrive at a final derived builder using which we can construct our complex object so if it is not making much sense then here is a small example now say for example you want to construct an complex object for a particular product now in order to construct the complex object for this product what you decide is that you will basically segregate the creation of this object into three parts now for those three parts you need to write a builder so what you do is you create three builders naming builder a builder b and also builder c now once you have created all these builders what you can do is you can inherit builder a into builder b which means that in the builder b class you can inherit builder a class and then you can inherit builder b class into builder c class so this would mean that your builder c class is the last and the final derived class for your builder and now you can use this particular derived class as the builder class to construct your complex product object which means that the builder that you are going to use in order to construct your complex product object will be builder c and why is it so because if you remember that in multi level inheritance the last and the final derived class that we get will have access to all the properties and the members of all its parent classes right which means that in our case builder c will have the the access of all the methods and members of all the parent class which means that builder c will have access to all the methods of builder b and also builder a because both of these classes are the parent class of builder c so this is the concept that we are going to use so as you can see here that this is quite common to builder facets because in builder facets also we created multiple builders to construct our object and same goes for builder inheritance as well here also we can create multiple builders to construct our complex object but the only difference is in builder inheritance we are using the concept of multi level inheritance and using that what basically we are doing is instead of calling each of those builders separately into one builder and constructing our complex object we are simply using multi level inheritance using which we can arrive at the last one single builder which will have access to all the methods and members of all the parent classes or all the parent builders so now after having the conceptual understanding of builder inheritance now let us go to the editor and code an example Okay so let us start coding the example in order to understand the builder inheritance so as i said earlier that when it comes to builder facets we created multiple builders right in order to create our complex object now again when it comes to builder inheritance we will have to create multiple builders in order to create our complex object so what we can do is just to explain this particular concept i will use the code that we created for builder facets so let me just copy paste this code from builder facets to builder inheritance and don't worry if you do not have this code then you can simply go to the description of this video and you can open the link of my github account where i have uploaded all this code both for builder facets and builder inheritance so you can get that reference so let us just quickly get a recap of this particular code that we have written for builder facets so that we are able to understand that how we have created multiple builders in order to create our complex object so as you can see here that this is our main class right the main employee class for which we want to create the object and as you can see that we are storing some address information and also some information about the employment details of the employee and also we have the specification method using which we are able to see all the attributes of our employee object coming out of this class and then we have the employee builder now this employee builder is used to basically access the other builders that we have created for address and employment right so as you can see here that we have created a method for accessing the address builder in the address info method and also we have another method for employment details where the method name is employment info and basically this method tries to access the employment builder class and then we have these two builders using which we can basically set different parameters of our employee object right so this was our code for builder facets now let us try to make some modifications in this code so that we can change it to builder inheritance which means that we will just make modifications in this code in order to convert this code to a builder inheritance setup and using the builder inheritance we will be able to construct our complex object so in order to do that what we can first do is let us add few more information into our employee object 
So say for example, we want to store some general information about this employee and let's say those general informations are the name of the employee. So we can write self dot name and let's say it is none and also we can store the mobile number of the employee. So we can write self dot mobile number and it will be equal to none. So these are the two extra informations that we will store in our employee object. And now what we can do is we can simply remove this particular builder altogether. And in place of that particular class, what we can do is we can write a builder to store the general information about the employee, right? We can create a separate builder to store the general information about the employee. So we can write class and let's say this is a general information builder. And inside this class, we can declare our init method. So we can write def in it and this will accept the employee object and if the employee object is not provided then it can basically create a new employee object and then we can store this employee object into the employee instance variable so we can write self dot employee equals employee and now we can create our set methods in order to basically set the name and also the mobile number so we can quickly write def set name and this will take name as the input parameter and then we can simply store that inside our employee object so we can write self dot employee dot name and that will be equal to name and then we can just return self and again we can write the next method which is to store the mobile number so we can write def set mobile number let us say it will take the input parameter of a number and then again we can simply write self dot employee dot mobile number it will be equal to number and then we can simply return self so this will be our first builder for our employee object, right? So what we can do is we can inherit this particular class into our next builder. So the next builder that we wanted to create was our address builder, right? So as you can see here that we have our address builder already created. So instead of the employee builder, which we have removed earlier, let us simply inherit this general info builder into the address builder. And now we can just remove this init method. It won't be required anymore. And we have all the methods in order to set different attributes of the address information of our employee object, right? So those methods are already created here. So now we have simply inherited the general info builder inside the address builder. And the next information that we wanted to store was about the employment details of the employer right so here we have the class or the builder class for our employment information so here again instead of inheriting this employee builder which we have already removed we can inherit the address builder now okay so i hope that you are able to notice how we are inheriting different builders one over the other so the first builder class that we had we are basically inheriting that class into our next builder which is the address builder and then we are inheriting the address builder into our employment builder and now here again we can simply remove the init method it won't be required anymore and also as you can see that we have all the methods defined to basically store all the information about the employment details of the employee here so we don't have to make any changes here so now as you can notice here that we don't have any further information to store about the employee object right so employment builder seems to be our last derived builder and now you can use this employment builder as your builder to create the complex employee object and this is how you can use builder inheritance so what you can do is you can create multiple builder classes in order to store different information about employee and you can then inherit those builders one over the other in order to arrive at the last and the final derived builder class and you can use that last derived builder class as your builder class to construct the complex object so in this case employment builder will be the builder for us to create the employee object and why is it so it is simply because the employment builder which is the last derived builder class in this multi-level inheritance structure will have access to all the methods and attributes of all its parents right so which means that employee builder will have access to all the methods of address builder and because address builder is inheriting general info builder the address builder will have access to all the methods and attributes of general info builder which means that this particular derived builder which is the employment builder will have access to both address builder and also the general info builder right 
and that is the reason why you can simply use this particular employment builder as the final builder for your employee object so now instead of instantiating the employee builder which we did for the builder facets what we can do is we can simply replace it with employment builder and now we can use this employment builder as our object in order to access all the methods of all the builders that we have created so what we can do is we can simply remove these methods because they are no longer available so you can so you can remove both address info and the employment info and now as you can see here that this particular instance of the employment builder class is having access to all these methods that we created earlier right and also it will have access to the new methods that we have added into our code right which was the general info builder right this was the new builder that we added as part of this particular example so now that employment builder class or the instance of that employment builder class will have access to these set name and set mobile number methods as well so which means that here you can basically write dot set name and then you can pass the name of this particular employee let's say the name of this employee is mr employee and also you can add the method to set the mobile number of this particular employee so you can just write dot set mobile number and here you can simply add some mobile number so you can just write plus nine one and let's say the employee's number is this so these are the information that we want to add about this particular employee and as you can see here that the employment builder which is the last derived builder in our code is able to access all the methods of its parent builders and this is how you can use the builder inheritance in order to access all the methods of all your parent builders in a single builder and this is where the builder inheritance basically helps you in order to provide you access of all the apis that you have created in order to set different parameters of your object because you may have created multiple builders to create information about or to store information about different parameters of your particular object but using builder inheritance you can simply bring all of those api access into one single builder class and after instantiating that one particular builder class you can basically create your entire complex object and this is exactly what we are doing here right so now we have access of all those methods inside this employment builder class and now we have instantiated it and after that we have access to all the methods that are available in all the parent classes of this particular employment builder class so now if we execute this particular code let's see what we get okay so we got an error here so the error says that the employment builder object has no attribute build which means that we completely forgot to add the build method which basically returns us the object that we are trying to create right so now you can add this build method either in your general info builder or in your address builder or even in your employment builder it won't matter so you can add this build method in any of these class so say for example if i add the build method in here in the general info builder so we can write def build and then we can simply return our self dot employee object so if i now execute this code then as you can see here that now we are getting the information about our employee object and we also missed one more part in this which is to add the general information into our specification method so we can quickly add that so here we will simply mention the name of the employee along with the mobile number of the employee so let us just now execute this once again so as you can see here that now we are getting the name of the employee and also the mobile number of the employee along with the address and also the employment details of the employee which means that our employee object got created and also we are able to see all the information about the employee in our result so as i said that we can add the build method either in our general info class or we can add this into our address builder class so if i execute it now then as you can see that we are getting the same result and also if you want you can add this build method even inside your employment builder class so if we execute this code now then as you can see here that again we are getting the same result so i hope that now you understand that why is it so important for you to have good understanding about inheritance concept in object oriented programming in order to understand this particular example and if you have good understanding about inheritance only then you will be able to understand that why is this particular build method is able to work in any of these builders right so that is exactly why i wanted you to know the inheritance concept well before understanding this particular example so i hope that now you are able to understand that how we can create the setup of builder inheritance where we can create multiple builders and later we can inherit one builder over the other and finally arrive at a derived builder or the last derived builder and we can use that particular last derived builder as the builder class for creating our complex object so this was about the builder inheritance so in this section we have covered all the concept related to the builder patterns so first we understood about the builder class itself and 
and how we can use a builder pattern in order to segregate the responsibility of creation of an object from the representation of that object and then we understood about the builder facets because sometimes your object can be complex enough for you to basically design multiple builders in order to construct the complex object and then finally we understood about builder inheritance where you can again create multiple builders but this time you can use multi-level inheritance basically to arrive at a final derived builder and you can use that derived builder as the builder for creating your complex object and by doing so you will basically have the access of all the methods and attributes of all the builders that you have created in a single builder class so i hope that now you have good understanding about builder patterns so in the next section of this tutorial we will start understanding about the factory patterns so if you have any doubts or queries related to builder inheritance or any other builder patterns or any other concepts that i have taken till now you can definitely post those questions into the comment section i'll definitely respond to you and also if you have any feedback or suggestions in general you can post those also in the comment section so having said that i hope you enjoyed this video and also you were able to get a lot of value out of this video so from the next video we will start understanding about factory pattern so if you like this video then hit that like button share it with other code lovers and also subscribe to code framer for more videos in the future thank you and see you next time